Hello and welcome to Theology on Tap. If you were to ever ask me why I talk about theology over a drink, I would say that is because when we're sharing a drink together, relaxed, I think we become a little bit more open-minded, a little bit more honest. Have you ever discussed or debated with somebody about theology at a church? It's not something that I recommend because there can be a fight. Today I want to talk about spiritual gifts. Now there are a variety of gifts that's mentioned in the Bible. And I'm just going to tell you that the biggest problem with spiritual gifts is that we rank them. You know, when there's a gift of healing or gift of service to, you know, other things that's written in the Bible. You know, if you're a very spiritual person, then you'll get these gifts that are very spiritual. I guess the more spiritual you are, the bigger and better gifts that you will get. So there aren't that many people who has the gift of healing. You know, someone like Benny Hinn or whatever. I'm talking about Benny Hinn, you know, uh, I watch his um, YouTube videos of him healing people left and right. But I wonder if he ever heals people left and right outside of stage. And plus, I never met anybody who were healed by, through a prayer myself either. So it's hard to say. But I did meet a couple of people who had a gift of healing. When my mother was diagnosed with cancer, she had to pay some money and find this pastor who's got a gift of healing. And she was prayed over. And uh, there was one pastor who actually said, God told me that your mother is going to be healed. Don't worry about it. Of course, a few months later, my mother died. So if I really stick to the Word of God, that is the Old Testament teachings, I have the right to go beat him up or even murder the guy because he's not really from God. If you prophesy anything in the name of God and it doesn't come to pass, then he's a false prophet. And I think that seems to be a big problem. We make such a big deal out of spiritual gifts that most people feel that they can't do many great things for God because they don't have these great gifts. So I want to go over 1 Corinthians chapter 11 with you and talk about spiritual gifts. All right, here we go. Now, it says, Concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be unaware. Now, you notice in this particular Bible that I'm using here, I think the New American Standard, uh, over at the Bible study tools. Now, you, you see how these things, the words are uh, in blue? Now concerning spiritual gifts. The word gifts is not in blue. Now why is that? Because the word gifts is not in the Bible. It is something that was added by people who feel that Paul is talking about spiritual gifts here. But obviously, if Paul didn't write the word gifts, then he is not really talking about gifts. So, I like this Bible study tools because you could click on the word spiritual, spiritual gifts, and look at the word. And then it'll tell you the definition of it. It says, relating to the human spirit, rational soul as part of a man which is akin to God and serves as an instrument or an organ. So, basically, the best translation that I could think about is spirituals so it should actually read now concerning the spirituals brothers I do not want you to be unaware unaware meaning that it refers to people who are having relationship with God who has the Spirit of God so he's talking about everybody he's not talking about gifts you see he's not talking about gifts he's talking about people who are touched by God's Spirit who are the spirituals who believe in God here's the Verse 4, now there are a variety of gifts. Right? Because if you're spirituals, then you should have a variety of gifts. But the word gifts, click on that one, doesn't mean gift at all. The word is charisma. Now we heard that word before if you've ever been to church. Basically it means grace, a favor, which one received without any merit of his own. So I don't know why we use the word gifts here. It should, it should actually say, now there are a variety of favors. There are a variety of grace. But the same spirit. 
Now, when you talk about variety of favors, it means that God decides what kind of favor a person gets. That's what it means, because he comes from the same spirit. It doesn't really talk about, it is not talking about gifts in the sense of, hey, here's the list of things that you're going to get. You know, here's a free gift. It's just favors. So there are different kind of favors. So once again, we're not focusing on the gifts. We're focusing on God, the Spirit of God, who gives us, who gives us grace. And then he says, and there are varieties of ministries. And the word varieties is actually, if you click on that, it should also say division or distribution. And I, I like that one better, distribution. Okay, meaning, basically, there are varieties of ministries, meaning God apportions the kind of ministries that we have in God's kingdom. But if you click on the word ministries here, it actually means service. Right? And, and I think we want to use the words like ministry, we want to use the word like gifts, because it is kind of, you know, it makes it seem like it's a thing that you do at a church, right? I mean, when you go to church, there are different kind of ministries there, you know, for the adults and for the young ones and for the elderly, for the sick and whatnot. So it makes it look like it's talking about that, but they actually just mean service, any kind of service. And there is different kinds that God apportions the kind of a service that we are given to do. But no one really could tell you what that service may be that's between you and the Lord, right? Because it's the same Lord. Now, I could have a gift of preaching or whatever, right? You might say that's, I mean, gift, but that is something that God apportioned out of His grace so that I could use that as a service unto the Lord. Unto the Lord, not to the church or anything like that at all but unto the Lord. And then there are varieties, or the word is apportioned. There are apportioned of effects. We click on the word effects. What does that mean? Um, operation. There are different kinds of services, different kind of operations. Right? Once again, it, that is also apportioned as well. But the same God works all things in all people. You see, right? So to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good, for the common good of the world. So I'm not going to go further into this, but I just want to tell you right now, when it comes to spiritual gifts, it is not about the gifts. It is not about what you have and what you don't have. It is about God. It is about the Spirit of God that apportions you with the, with the ability to serve. And that's to serve is not a ministry in the sense that it is something that is organized by the church. It's a ministry as in it's a service. So it doesn't have to be at a church or anything. It could just be at a home or a neighborhood or your friends at school, church, um, or even just going shopping. But if we, every single person, were to use that grace that God has given to us, apportioned service, the abilities from the Lord, then we can be a church. Every single person has that grace. But the problem is, when we appoint certain people to a position in church, and we create a ministry where they say less than 5% of the people in the church are actually involved in the ministry, then everyone else just goes to church and listens to the Word of God, and they go home and they don't really do anything else. You know, so I think the whole idea of organized ministry can be a problem for only a small amount of people actually do anything for the church. But every single por a person is given grace, has given the ability to serve. And I think that's really important. Yeah, there are different kind of grace that is mentioned in the scripture, like healing, serving, uh, preaching, prophesying administrations, I mean, there are a variety of things. But when the Bible talks about these varieties, it's not a full list. It is not. I think Paul is and other the New Testament writers are just writing the, some of the things that they have seen God apportion His grace to. But it could be really anything. We should never think that way. 
We should never look at a man who has been given the ability to heal or whatever it may be as somebody who is gifted from God and somehow he is better or closer to God. That is not so. We should never ever think that way. Do not ever look at another man and say that person is holier than you or better than you or closer to God than you because that's just it's not the case. If somebody actually feel that they're closer to God because they pray more or whatever, then they have taken the glory away from Jesus Christ. That's my opinion. And the final thing that I want to say is that since God apportions the, His grace to individuals for service, it really depends on time of our lives that He will give us different grace, different kind of gifts, if you will. So just because at one time you have a gift of healing or gift of service, gift of administration, doesn't mean it is something that you have to do all the time either. What I believe is that God will give you His grace for service whenever the time needs it. When it comes to spirituals, it's not an office, it is not a ministry, it is His grace. Jesus deserves all the honor and glory, not individuals. So as you walk in that path of righteousness in the fellowship of God, do not limit yourself because you see yourself to be less than others. Look to God and see how great He is. And wherever God leads you to go, He will definitely give you His grace and the ability to portion His grace so that we all can be of His service. And I pray that God will give you His grace and apportion you a greater ability to serve. Hey, thanks for watching this video. I hope it is helpful to you to get closer to God. Subscribe, keep coming back to this channel, and I pray it will be a blessing to you. God bless. See you next time.